Good evening, everybody. Welcome along to this edition of Sports View on Monday, the 22nd of July, uh, 2024. And uh, welcome, Darren. Hey, Pat. Hi, Joe. Hey, Joe. Welcome, Joe Waters. And, um, Sports Hi, Pat. Hey, Darren. And press the red button on the right-hand side to subscribe to our channel. And we thank you all, all the people who... Uh, look at this program and who make a, an oblique comment now and again, it's very, very well worthwhile. We don't take any notice, you know. We don't take ourselves very seriously, I don't think either anyway, you know, which is the way we should be. <laughs> but um, where am I? I have a piece lined up here. Um, we're down here, and I'm, I'm down here at the moment in the south of France, as you can guess. And um, uh, this is my last week here. But last... Um, we're here, the, the most famous bike race in the world, um, the Tour de France, uh, goes to all these towns and villages around around the, the country. Of course, it finished yesterday on Sunday, but it didn't finish in Paris because they're getting ready for the Friday night opening of the Olympics, uh, the opening ceremonies on Friday night. So another fantastic event. There's loads of tickets, guys, if you want to go online, available for the different things I've, I've seen them today. If you want to go on the French, the French sites, there are tickets available for different sporting events around the place. So there are tickets available, and some of them are, are, are not too expensive. But anyway, we were here in allignan de Vent, which is 20 minutes from Bézé, the biggest city near us, and the Tour de France came through last Tuesday. Now... The whole village, small enough village, a couple of thousand people were all out for the thing. And the amount of um, people, the amount of the entourage just involved in the tour, it came through about an hour before the, the main body of cyclists came through. And the amount of advertisers and all, it's a huge, huge, huge event. You know, it's just phenomenal to see it. And you don't get the same atmosphere when you watch it on television but anyway this is our little um uh Lear media's um homage to the tour hope you enjoy it island hello island <laughs> uh Magnifique. Voilà, magnifique. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the local lads. We were standing in 33 degrees of heat for about 40 minutes waiting for it to come through. I got I got a lot of sunburn on my legs, but I mean <laughs> to see to see the cyclists cycling in that heat is just phenomenal, you know, because our clothes are stopping wet from just standing still. You can imagine what, what conditions were like be cycling a bicycle, you know, at 40 or 50 miles an hour. Anyway, Ironman, but uh, Tajik Pogacar won the, his third Tour de France yesterday from Slovenia. And uh, what, what, a, what a fantastic man he was. And uh, Mark Cavendish made history as well. The English rider, Mark Cavendish, some of you would know him. He won his 35th stage on the Tour. And he said this is his last tour, you know. Also, we had the very first African from Eritrea to win a stage. I think he won three stages. And he won the, he won the points jersey, the green jersey. He was um, Binam Gibnai was his name, you know. And he made history as well on this year's tour. But it's a huge... I think it's... I think cycling itself, not because we were here... It's coming back a bit. I think it's the I think the 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 sport itself is coming back from the horrific time it had in the eighties and uh, long may it continue because um it's a fantastic occasion. Did you see any of it on the television ads? I saw bits and bobs of it, but not um not a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. 
it's it's just uh, Yates, uh, the English rider, did very well. I think he finished fourth or fifth. Um, he did very well. You know, he's a very good mountain climber as well. But uh, that was our little match to the Tour de France. Anyway, we're going to begin, I suppose, with golf, uh, Darwin and Joe. Golf, the British Open was on. It's the it of the four of the four um, main nine. Uh, what do they call them? Majors, majors, majors. The British Open has the least amount of money, prize money, of the four of them. Uh, even though it's still considerable, it's the least pay out of them all. So, uh, uh, Alexander Schauffele was the winner at minus nine. There weren't many players, I think only seven or eight players under par for the whole tournament. Not like the eye watering 22 and 24 and 26 under that we've been looking at all year. There was no 22 under on this one, I can say that much. And Schauffele shot a final round of 65, which was incredible to say the least of it. Shane Lowry led, 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 led for the first two rounds. He had a magnificent uh, tournament. He finished at minus four. He had a final round of 68, but the 77 on Saturday did him in, so to speak. He won 611,000 for his, for his troubles. And uh, Parry Harrington wasn't mentioned much in the change dispatches. He finished down in 22nd place at plus four. You know, he's 52 or 53 years of age. He had an incredible tournament as well. And he won 150 grand. But Alexander Schauffele got 3.1 million as the winner. So first three people got over a million pounds. So good money. Uh, and an awful lot of publicity for the British Open, the guys, was, was taken up on the media by uh, Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. And uh, two of them were spectators for most of the, the weekend. Anyway, and McIlroy was, uh, I think, 11 over. He finished at 11 over and uh, he did a disaster again. Darren, what, did you see much of it? Yeah, I watched quite a bit of it yesterday and I sort of kept my eye on it over Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But I think what everybody's kind of missing the point with um, Chauffele is that that 68 he did on Saturday in that weather kind of laid a marker out. Yes. Everybody else is going backwards and he shoots 68. In that, and he was out in some of the worst of that. He was. He's a very uh, steady golfer. Yeah, and, and to be honest, you know, as he was, he was the best player there, and he he played great over the weekend, sixty eight, sixty five on the weekend. Yeah, you deserve to win it if you shoot those numbers, don't you? Yeah, and uh, Shane Lowry, uh, the starter did Shane Lowry in the seventy seven. He left about five or six for the real body chances. Uh, you know. Uh, that was it, you know. He's putting, he's putting, um, let him down a bit, you know. But he had a good open, he had a good tournament. Well, his form is good going into the Olympics. He'll be playing with McElroy now in the Olympics, as we know. And Fleetwood, and uh, who's playing with Fleetwood? Till Hatton, is it? Till Hatton, I think, yeah, yeah. Till Hatton and Fleetwood are playing for England in the Olympics, which is starting on Friday, as, as we said. But uh, that'll be good for the, for the golf. The golf will be. Interesting. So that was um uh, what's his name? I didn't know Nick Dunlap, who was who won as an amateur and as a professional on the tour in the same year. He made history over the weekend. Nick Dunlap, if you remember, he um won the Bermuda Championship over the weekend and uh, he brought him up to number sixty three in the FedEx rankings, which is a sensational. Golf for me, you know, it was a bit overshadowed because the British Open was on, but, uh, but uh, he made a bit of history. He was the first golfer to win as an amateur, and then he turned professional after that, and he won the Bermuda Championship. So there you go. Still good things happening, and still good stories in golf. But as we said, Tiger Woods got a lot of stick from people, and uh, he gets a lot of publicity. And, um, you know, I, I was looking at physically at the way he walks around, lads, I think he's in serious trouble physically as well. I think he's in so much pain that we don't know about. I mean, you know, I don't think we really appreciate how, how bad that injury was with his leg. I mean, it was basically severed, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I you know, I, I hate watching it because you kind of remember him oh. you know, just being unbeatable. Um. 
and then you watch it and he's like half he's half the golfer he was, wasn't he? I mean he's you know, if somebody had said to you fifteen years ago that Woods won't break eighty, you would have laughed at them, wouldn't you? You would, yeah. And I like watching Big John as well, John Daly. <laughs> yeah, I mean he, he's um I mean he's not well. I mean I I know Daly and he's he's got cancer and different things like that. So he's he he he'll play but he's struggling really with his health as well. Oh yeah, I mean you were just saying there you met Donald Trump on the golf course. His granddaughter is blazing a trail in the golfing circles. Yeah. Darwin. And uh, she's a uh, she's supposed to be a pretty pretty good talent as well, you know. And uh, Yeah, I've seen her practicing at Doral in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, and she she does she it's a good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's she's making waves, you never know. You never know. Anyway, I suppose to use the program. Press the red button on the right hand side to subscribe to our channel, and uh, we very much appreciate it. Just move on to soccer, guys. Um, there's a lot of there's lots of news around, but very 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 little of it qualified. Lots of um, rumors around who's going to be the next England manager, and uh, uh, what's his name, Eddie Howe, has ruled himself out of the job. Uh, today I was reading about Eddie Howe. I'd say he was in line to get the job, lads. What do you think? I think, it, yeah, I think he was in line for it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, um, I, I, I think he likes club management too much to get himself into, um, into just managing the national team. Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, they've got a, they've got a real big. Um, project going with Newcastle so I think that he wants to, to see that through Yeah there's a huge investment there of course and Eddie Howe said he's fully committed to Newcastle United and, and so that, that that would put him out but your man the chap that was, that was uh, in charge of Brighton is in the frame as well, forget his name that's oh, Gary Potter. Potter Potter, Potter I don't know who's going to get the job and uh, um I see that Cesc Fabregas has taken over the main uh, manager of the coaching job in the Serie A club, Como, or up to Serie A, so he has a nice job for himself. Now, the Olympic soccer tournament will be beginning on Wednesday. There's four groups in the Olympics, in case for anybody who doesn't know about it, there's a, soccer is, is a sport for a long time in, in the Olympics. And the four groups... Of four, of four in each group, there are 16 teams qualified for the Olympics. Now, I didn't go into the information how, how it's done, but it's done, done regionally the same as the World Cup in the regions that have broken in for the World Cup. So, in Group A, we have um, France, the USA, Guinea, and New Zealand. In Group B, we have Argentina, Morocco, Iraq, and Ukraine. Group C, you have Uzbekistan, Spain. Egypt and the Dominican Republic, and in Group D, you have Japan, Paraguay, Mali, and Israel. So there you go. I think Spain will probably be the favourites. Spain, Argentina, and France are already um, are already picked out as one of the three teams could win it. I don't know. I know what kind of a team they're allowed to play. I don't know that either. You know, but uh, it can be good. So the Olympic football is starting, as I said, on Wednesday, the 24th, and the final will be on, on the 10th of August. So there you go now. You have no excuse for miss it. The program, all the information is on the website, and they have an excellent website, the Paris 24 Olympic website. is just fantastic, I must say. You know, it really is. I was only on it briefly today, but uh, all the information is on it. And, of course, it will be on all, all trusted television as well, you know. But that's the. Um, so, Derwin, who would you like to see in 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 charge of England instead of? Um, um, he's going to be knighted for his efforts anyway, as well. Uh, you know, I mean, I've heard. I mean, reading over here, you've got Klopp is apparently sort of. He is. He's not, he's not denying it. He's not saying no, no, no. He's he's just kind of swerving the question. Is that why he left Liverpool to be take over England? No, I don't think it was that. But I think I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I think I, I'd quite like to see Gary Potter get it. Yeah, 
he's uh, I think he's had some bad rough treatment in the past with um, club life. Well, Potter proved himself capable with Brighton on a small budget, and uh, I think he he had him playing a fantastic brand of soccer before Chelsea done it. Chelsea has done a lot, a lot of managers in, as we know, you know, down, down through the years. You know, <laughs> people with people with fantastic CVs went to Chelsea, and that was the that was the end of their managerial career as well. You know, so I think I'd, I'd like to see Potter get a chance at it. Yeah. I, I, I know, I, I know. Eddie Howe said no, but I, I, after time with football, I, I, I don't know if I believe him or not when they do say no. Yeah, yeah. There's usually, uh, there's usually. It's all eyes on the referee. We could. Be... So uh, it's like they deny it. Yet they're probably signing, putting ink to in, ink on the paper, aren't they? When they're denying it. Yes, yeah, so, I. Do. So and I, I mean, I, there's I, also. Noise about Lee Carsley getting a job. Uh, he was up for the, or they say he was up for the Irish job, but um, but he's he, was, he he was in the, he was mentioned for the Republic of Ireland job. You're right there, Lee Carsley was there. Yeah. They, they 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 gave it to the Icelandic chap, you know, but. Um, I, We'll see how that'll work out because the Republic of Ireland will be playing England in the Nations League in um, October, I think. So there you go. We have a manager in place. England will have a new manager then. And, uh, you know, they could be in serious trouble in the Republic if they don't watch out. <laughs> <laughs> they might get Sam Allardyce back. What do you reckon? Big Sam. <laughs> I think his, time is, his time is gone, I think. I don't know. I'm surprised, Harry, I'm surprised Harry Redknapp's not been mentioned yet. I know, that's another one. But, you know, Harry is real good at mentioning himself. Yeah, he's been very quiet. So he, he is. He might be ducking and diving in the background somewhere. He's usually up to <laughs> something. But, I, I mean, to be honest, I, I think they should stick with uh, an English manager. I really do. Um I think that, you know, for the most part, I don't... I'm, I'm surprised that Gary Lineker isn't in the frame because he knows everything, as you know. He's an expert in... I mean, he's, he, he, yeah, knows, he knows everything as well. He knows he everything. Could, so I don't know why he could have one, couldn't he? He could have Lineker and Neville. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, Roy, Roy Keane and me. Roy Keane could, be, could manage England. Well, Roy Keane could come on with a magic sponge or something, couldn't yeah. he? <laughs> Roy Keane and Gary Neville were managing <laughs> well maybe Roy Keane could be the PR man for the England job yeah that would be good wouldn't it yeah. it would be very good I'd love to have a team talk I'd love to listen to a team talk from Roy Keane <laughs> yeah you could ask a few players all right, that played with, played with Sunderland when he was manager you know oh that would be a great great Fly on the wall documentary, listening to Roy King doing a or a half time talk. I mean, what I would just pay good money for the listen to those. Yeah, just, just do your job. Yeah, what do you yeah. do? Track you back, doing? do your job, and be honest and track back. Kick him, kick him. You can't catch him, kick him, slow him <laughs> up. You can just picture it, couldn't you? <laughs> I think it'd be a huge shock to the English players, anyway. To my, you know, but uh, uh, Roy has a comfortable life now. I don't think he'll take the stress of. I don't think he'll take the stress of, of of taking a job like that. You know, at this stage in his life, that's only the way I see it myself. Pike Rovers, Joe had a good weekend. I saw the day, yeah, the and they were playing in the. They're into the last sixteen now of the FAI Cup, which, yeah. is a, as you know, is a, is probably one of the most. The, you can, I should have got a picture of it for the show. It's a beautiful, beautiful trophy, you know. It's uh, far superior to anything on the British Isles that were that they're, it's a magnificent trophy, this FAI Cup. And uh, Pike Rovers um, beat Middleton 3 1, and they're now into the hat for the last 16 draw, which is on tomorrow. So, I mean, fair play to them to be a few bob in the coffers as well for them. So, and three, you know, you'd. One as well, right? 
Treaty Treaty United got two one penalties. They did. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so the you know there and there's a few big guns left. Uh, Duffers Shelburne, Shelburne won in Europe last week. They they uh, went away to Gibraltar, and Gibraltar. Uh, all reports the team they were playing with in Gibraltar. I don't know what kind of a team they had, but they tried to kick Shelburne off off the pitch. But the Duffer, the Duffer was involved in a few things himself, Damien. But uh, they came through anyway. The odd goal in five, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, was, uh, guess what was on BBC Two over the weekend? I know the All Ireland yeah. Hurling. Unbelievable! Did you, see, did you see it? I did. What do you think of it? I, I can't try to still trying to work it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> some some fella described it as fifteen Roy Keynes on each team with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> well I I just keep calling it Irish cricket, but I mean it just sounds good to me, Irish cricket. It's a unique it's a unique game and um um Cork lost by one point and um um I'm 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 a, I'm a bit down. I'm a cockman, but I mean, obviously, I like to see the good games. It's a very good final, and uh, one forty-one to three nineteen, uh, twenty-eight, no, three twenty-one or something. Huge score and um, fair play to. And remember, these players are only amateur players. They're not playing for money, so their fitness levels are very high. Their commitment and all their skill level, and uh, there you go. That was players. Fifth All Ireland ever, 1914, 1995, 1997, 2013, and 2024. Cork were going for their 31st, but they'll have to wait another year. But uh, Clare won their fifth ever. So for a small county like Clare, with just a handful of holding clubs, it's an incredible achievement. Next Sunday will be the All Ireland football final between Galway and Armagh. And uh, get your gloves on. That's what I say. <laughs> well, I reckon uh, I reckon Wilsden and uh, Kilburn came to a grinding halt. Who? <laughs> Wilsden and Kilburn came to a grinding halt. <laughs> Watching on BBC too. I mean, yeah. I couldn't get their ground it. I was like, BBC, 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 yeah. BBC, <laughs> BBC. Yeah, it was last year that started showing the GA finals, both hurling and football, and the football will be on next Sunday. As I said, to be on BBC Two as well. So, you know, well, yeah, they, they, they would be more akin to, they'd be more, more of a following for that than there is in the Holland because football is played in all 32 counties and all 32 counties participate in the football for people who may not know. In Holland, there's about eight to 10 counties who are top, top counties. The rest are in the second and third tier. So you don't get the, you got, you don't get the same spread of interest, unfortunately. So, so is hurling very similar, or is it a different game to Shinty? No, it's related to Shinty. Shinty, there's a Shinty International every year between Ireland and Scotland. Every second year in Scotland and in Ireland. In Shinty, uh, you can't catch the ball. Right. Uh, that's one big difference. In hurling, you can catch it and pick it up and so on. But in Shinty, it's all ground hurling. It's a, it's a little, it's like polo without the horse. So it's closer to the hockey than it is. It is. Shinty is very close to hockey. True. Okay. Very true. You know, but um, that 80, 80, 82,300 people were packed in yesterday. Yeah, I was amazed. 82,300 at a 100 euro a ticket for the seats and 75 euro to stand behind the two goals. So, Jesus. And, and yeah. in the yeah, in the semi final, Cork and Limerick played the semi final, and it was 82,300 full house again. And the other semi final between Clare and Kilkenny just drew under 38,000, I think. But so, where so, does all that money go from the gate receipts? Well. Well, you must remember, first of all, I want to bore our listen. There's 32 counties playing GA, both hurling and football, camogie and ladies football. There's 32 counties. In each county, then, there are clubs, you know, like um, like Wembley, like Luton. There are different clubs in each county. The money that's collected at central council level goes to the four 
there's uh, Ulster, Leinster, Munster and Connacht councils get so, so much fund, funding from central councils, from great receipts, from all their games. That in turn then is passed on to the clubs. The club then, it will depend on how many teams you have in your club. If you have a senior football and a senior hurling club, you'll get graduated, grants down along and so forth. So that's how okay. yeah, that's how it's distributed. I hope I didn't confuse everybody with that. Yeah. But, 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 there was a there was a big chance missed for a replay. Oh, it was appalling. It was it appalling. Was, Joe. I'm sick. I'm sick here. I was sick in front. I can imagine. I can just imagine. I mean, it was so blatant. Yeah. That, and I, I mean, I I don't know. I I, I can't remember all the the rules and what have you. But, I mean, is there a, an advantage rule in hurling like there is in soccer? There's an advantage given if you're fouled in the if you're fouled in the in the in the and you're taking your shot for goal or point and you fouled, the referee has discretion to allow that ball to be hit. If you don't score, it's pulled back for a free. That's the rule because there's no advantage then when you didn't right. score. So the cock the cockman went was going for a score, which would have drawn the match. His jersey was pulled by the clear back in front of the ref, and he gave no free. So, yeah. and then there was a controversial one a bit earlier where one of the uh, car players was going through. Yeah, he got he pulled was, down. He was hand tripped just outside the box, which meant that the player that did that should have been sent off under the rules. They didn't even get a free. Yeah. I was, uh, thank God I was on my own here. I was jumping out the window here. <laughs> um, however, um, uh, and I, then, I, of course, to make it worse, it was a Limerick referee. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, when I saw the referee, well, he's a poor referee anyway. Doesn't matter where he's from, that man is a very poor referee. And he ran out of pep at the extra time. He could hardly walk. He was out of <laughs> breath, you know? And so he was limping at the end of the match. He could hardly walk. But there you go. I just, <laughs> I say, if I if I was in Croke Park, I would have been arrested. There's no doubt about it. I would have, have been arrested. But thank God I was here. But <laughs> I'm guessing there's no VAR. Oh God, no. 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 <laughs> well, thankfully, there's no, nothing, no VAR because of the of the. There's um. They have technology for the goalposts. If there's a controversy about uh, the ball. That are going over the bar or under the bar. There's a replay for that, all right, for the scoring, scoring on each side of the ground. But uh, there's no replay of fouls or anything allowed. Uh, the, the only sport that allows that is rugby, I think, as far as I know. And hockey as well. You can, uh, you can field hockey, you can uh, get a check on a foul in, in the square, as far as I know, in hockey as well. But anyway. Uh, over the weekend, lads, um, uh, I, two of you are probably too young to remember, but over the weekend, we lost the snooker legend. Yeah, I saw that. A fellow Taffy, a fellow Taffy, Ray Reardon, he's up there on the screen, Ray Reardon, 91 years of age, Ray, fair play to him, a good age, Ray Reardon. I know, do you remember, Joe, I do you, you might remember, Pot Black on television. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pot Black and uh, he uh, Ray Reardon won won it in 1969. Pot Black, but he won the world championship six times, and he won it in um, in the 70s mainly. He won it five years in a row in the 70s. There's one snooker player won it in 72. Stopped his gallop was Alex Higgins. Remember he yeah. won the world champion in 72, and he won it again in 82. That was Alex Higgins. But Ray Reardon put um, uh, snooker on the map. He bought a lot of... Uh, of course, he, he was born in Wales, as you know, though, and he walked down the coal mines and he walked in the bars well, and then he took took up snooker. He yeah, played right... He was a policeman as well. Yeah, policeman, yeah. He played right into his... Uh, I think he was six, nearly 64 years old. I played, um, I played golf with him in a pro-am. Yeah, he was the president of the golf club down in Devon. Yeah, What's Churston Golf Club. Churston. Churston. Churston, is it? Yeah, near Brixham. Is that where is it? Near Brixham. Oh. Yeah. He was lovely. 
we played 18 holes around his own golf course and he, he was and then in the in the afternoon a load of um, people talked him into doing trick shots up in the snooker room above the clubhouse go here and then everybody was crammed into this snooker room I mean you could barely move his snooker cue because of people in the way yeah and he, he just he was telling jokes he was telling stories about John Spencer uh, Higgins, Ronnie O'Sullivan, um, and he—he he was just, and he loved it. I'll be totally honest; he was a complete showman doing that. Yeah. Very quiet yeah. on the golf course. I talked to him about his snooker and everything else, and you know, and he was—he was just very, just very. He was a gentleman about it all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at Churston Golf Club. He, I mean, he—they used to have a snooker competition, and the snooker's on a board is basically Ray Reardon. I mean, it was just like, but he was saying that he used to give the best player in the club um, during the winter. They used to have all the members would have a snooker competition during the winter. Yeah. And he was giving them something stupid like 70 or 80 head start and still beating them. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he um, I don't know if you saw, you saw a clip from Dennis Taylor Dennis Taylor told what was on BBC talking about it on BBC Breakfast, and he was saying that, that there was one trick shot that and no no trick shot player can play other than Ray Reardon, and oh, yeah. he used to roll a ball along the floor wherever it was in the snooker hall, and find out where the ball sloped, where the, the floor naturally sloped to, right? Because nothing's level, is it, Rudy? Right, and then. He would get on the snooker table and he would cannon a ball off the cushions, jump it off um, the table, and the ball would roll and cannon against the one that he'd pushed into the corner by rolling it. <laughs> and Dennis right. Taylor said it was like, he said, I do lots of trick shows now. He said, and I've tried it and I can't do it. He said, I just can't do it. He said, but Ray Reardon, he said, when we used to tour and do all these exhibition matches and the trick shots would come out and everything else. He said, I must've seen it a hundred times. He said, he never failed to pull it off correctly every single time. He said, I don't know how he did it. He said, I, I stand there. He said, I asked him one night to teach me how to do it. And he said, look, if you can't do it, you can't do it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> but I, I remember, I remember him, of course. I remember, I remember part black, Watching in black and white television. No, there you are. Yeah. Yeah, well, that and was you, um, that was old Attenborough, wasn't it? Who, who it, created it, Pop Black. You, you watch it on black and white television, but you had to be there at the beginning of the frame. Joe, you, anyone who watched it in black and white will remember this. And you, 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 you remember then where all the colored balls are, even though they're all black and white, but all the colored well, they move, you know. And so you'll be able to follow the scoring. And he was saying, he's going for the red. And murder my mother might come and say, oh, you notice the red ball? <laughs> <laughs> David, Attenborough, David Attenborough, when he was in charge, he was the BBC controller of programmes. Mm. He, he, when it went to colour, they wanted to drop Pop Black. And he said, no, you've got to keep Pop Black. Pop, Pop Black is it's going to be the biggest sport that you'll ever see. We've got yeah. to keep it. And he, he forced the BBC to keep Pop Black. It was very, very successful. Hugely I used successful. to love watching it. As a oh, kid, yeah. the, you couldn't wait to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, everybody that I know used to watch it. But it's kind of up there with, with Match of the Day, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd sit there as a kid and you know, you couldn't wait for match of the day to start, and it was the same with Pop Black. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was Ray Reardon, lads, and he had a, he had a fantastic career. And um, there was a few clips on the... I was trying to get a clip for him, but there's, most of them are very long. So um, next one, we might clip down thing a few bit. But there's a few nice anecdotes about him as well, you know. And, of course, Terry Griffiths, as we know, was another... Uh, he won the World Championship in 1979. That's Terry Griffiths, another taffy. He's not well at the moment. He's suffering uh, from dementia. 
And uh, we wish Terry the best of health anyway, you know. I was reading about him today, you know. It's, it's just it's just a sad, um, it's a sad disease, the dementia I'm talking about. My own mum died from it, and it's a, it's a horrible disease. And uh, they're doing a lot of uh, work on it at the moment. And uh, really, I don't know. Don't know what to say to people. All you do do is sympathise with people that are faced with it. You know, it's a it's a bleak a bleak prospect. You know, but however, we wish Terry the best. Uh, Terry Griffiths, of course, was renowned as a coach as well. You know, loads and loads of people went to him for work. But Mark Williams played a fantastic tribute to Rory on the end radio. You know, fair play to him as well. But anyway, that was really in ninety one. Passed away. World champions six times. He won the Masters in 1976 as well. And he won three more tournaments and he won Pot Black in 69. That was our rear rear And as, De- as Derwin said, he could play golf as well, could he, De- uh, Derwin? Yeah, he was, He was. I think he was up, like off about 11 or 12 when I played with him. Oh, my God. He was just a nice guy. Yeah. No, no, I'm a good guy. There you are. Sports News Report on their media, TV. Tell all your friends about us. Press the, the red button to subscribe to our channel. The Olympics are opening on Friday night in uh, Paris. And um, as I said, for people who are interested, there are plenty plenty tickets available. Plenty tickets for for sailing, for the rowing, uh, for the water sports, swimming. I know about boxing now. I didn't look at that up. But, uh, you know, if you want to see the Rasmus as of it, there you go. It's only up the road with... We'll be, we'll be, we won't be here. We'll probably be gone back over the week next weekend. But anyway, um, as I said, the uh, Formula One, the Hungarian Grand Prix was on over the weekend, and uh, believe it or not, Verstappen didn't win it. Red Bull didn't win it. <laughs> they took his wheels away. That's what stopped. You know, him. <laughs> and they took they took the steering wheel away. Yeah, but, exactly. He's got a handicap now. He's only allowed two wheels. Piastri won it, Norris was second, Hamilton third, Leclerc fourth, and Verstappen fifth. So that was the 13th Grand Prix of the year. Seven won by Red Bull, two won by McLaren, two by Ferrari, and two by Mercedes. So there you go. So I don't know. There you go. Uh, I, I was a bit of the race, all right, you know. But I was surprised he couldn't. Uh, Hamilton drove a very good race and toured very good, keeping Verstappen and the boys at bay. You know, they, I don't know. They, 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 a lot of these things uh, even up over the weekend. As I said, we'd be going to. Um, so now let's get back to soccer as we're on about it. Who would you down? Who are the who's the, who are the favourites being spoken about? Is there any name, any any obvious name that we should be worried about? For the England job, or if you were the head of the FA, who would you give it to? Who would you be running after? Potter, I think. Potter, Graham Potter. Yeah. Joe, yeah, he's a be sound. I, I mean, I said earlier, I think they have to stick with an English coach. I, I think that, um, you know, Southgate's done a great job with what he, what he's done, um, and now. Somebody else can take it to the next level uh, that they need to. They they need somebody in there that is going to unshackle the you know the the creative players. And I think Potter is one of those guys. He plays his teams always play a good brand of football, um, and they defend well. So I think he'd be a good choice for it. I really and uh, Southgate, of course, was the most successful manager since Alf Ramsey, which is no mean feat, considering all the pressure. That he needs. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's. I know people, you could make a good argument that uh, that Southgate did even better than Sarov, because I mean, be honest here. Uh, they had the World Cup in England when they won it. So they won it on home soil, which still is a fantastic achievement. But when you look at qualifying-wise, uh, they only qualified for Mexico in 70 because they were world champions. 
right? They didn't have to go through qualification. 74, they didn't, uh, they didn't make no. it. Poland knocked them out, didn't they? Yeah. So it's, um, you know... And that and was that, Ramsey's that, last match, wasn't it? Yeah, that, it ended up costing Sarov um, his job. But again, like I say, you know, the English public and the English press are yeah. so fickle when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, we talked we talked a couple of weeks ago about um, Helmut Schoen, who was at four World Cups with Germany, and he won one. He lost in the final, the semi-final, uh, and then he won the one in Germany when it was there in 74. 74, yeah. 74, yeah. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if he retired after that or if he missed out on the next time, although they were qualified because they were champions. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, what, what Southgate did was a, a, an absolutely terrific uh, achievement. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really hard for somebody else to come in and maintain that, you know, because they're, the fans now and the media are expecting them to be in semifinals and finals every time. Yeah. Right? And now the added pressure is, well, now we want to win. Yeah. You know? And that's, that is a huge amount of pressure going on whoever comes, comes in next. Because it, it's, you know, the expectation is already there. And it's, it is very, very difficult to, uh, to win these things. You know, there, there's, always, there's always a surprise team that comes out in these tournaments. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Denmark did back when Schmeichel and those guys won it. You know, Greece, Greece did when they won it. Mm. You know, that there's and Croatia when they had that golden generation that yeah. they had, you know, so there's always these teams that are coming out, and now that there's even more of them coming because yeah. their 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 players are playing all over the world now. Well, you saw you saw Georgia at the you saw Georgia at the Euros. Mm -hmm. They were a good solid team, and the same with uh, Romania. Yeah, Romania have a good of a good team as well. I thought they had anyway. Say the yes. same about Turkey, can't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Hungary. Let, let's face it, the next the next tournament's the World Cup too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which will be, uh, I I don't want to say it's harder than the European Championships, but it's got to be harder because you've got all the big teams coming in for the World Cup, haven't you? Well, you have. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it increases. Yeah, the the standard increases. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you have about ten between ten and twelve teams in the World Cup who will win it. In right. my opinion. you don't have that spread in Europe in the Euros, you know. You no, know? I mean, if sorry, go on, Darren. No, no, go on, Jack. So I mean, my fear here is that we've just watched the Euros, and it was really predominantly defensive football yes that was being played you know with a lot of these small smaller nations now coming into it uh and a lot of them are play, are very very solid organized defensively yes and if that's the way it's going to go then it's going to be very very interesting as the i hope it doesn't go that way like it did you know a few years ago where uh, everybody was playing with sweepers and dropping back and what have you. Um, when I hear the phrase, ah, Pat, he's a defensive midfielder. I mean, I, I wouldn't have anybody on the team as a defensive midfielder. You have four defenders on your, you have four defenders and a goalkeeper on your team to do the defending. The midfield players are to do your attacking and your creativity for the forwards. In my opinion, that's the way I look at it simply. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, they, they talk about... I remember uh, Bob Paisley mm -hmm. once, um, he was he was talking to somebody, he was being interviewed about it, and they, 
the phrase that the that the coach was making, somebody at the FA was doing a a coaching clinic, and he said, "Well, he's the windshield wiper in front of the defense. That's his role." And Bob Paisley said, "I didn't think we had any windshield wipers in football. I thought they were only on cars." Yeah. And it, like, and and that's the thing with it. So, and Cluffy said, "Hang on a second. We have a defensive midfield player." To protect the centre backs, the centre halves. Why can't the centre halves do their own job? Exactly. That's their job. You know. So it, it, it you know, it, I mean, I know, I know things change and they go in different ways and what have you. But we talked about it last week. Declan Rice, you know, oh, his pass percentage completions uh, is unreal. Well, you know what. They're going to be unreal if you pass the ball sideways and backwards. It's the goalkeeper. Phil, I see Phil Foden has a new name now. He's known as James Bond, 007. He had no goals, no assists after seven games. 007 Foden. <laughs> after I wonder if he'll have a tattoo on his neck saying that. <laughs> Double seven. <laughs> the, the only good thing about the World Cup is that you can guarantee Brazil ain't going to turn up with a defence, aren't they? Right. Well, well that, that, that's true. That's true. More I think so... even the goalkeeper is a, a striker who just happens to wear a pair of gloves, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll get the more World Cup finals, 4-3 or 4-2 finals. You no. Know, you, you'll get the more them like that, you know? It's, well, which is you know, I mean... I, it's just interesting, you know, you look at, you know, you're going to have Brazil in, are going to be in it. Spain will be in it. And then Argentina. there too, Argentina, you know, so, and maybe, I don't think, I think it'd be very hard for Messi to make the next World Cup. Ah, oh, he wants. Uruguay, Uruguay are dark horses, they're playing good soccer. Yeah. yeah you've got Chile playing good too, haven't they? Chile. Yeah. Didn't you have, uh, so it I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting uh to see what what the style is gonna come out of it, you know, if, what's gonna happen. If you think about it, there's gonna be quite a few teams uh not missing people, but in a transition period, isn't it? Argentina with without Messi, Portugal yeah. without Ronaldo. You know, I'm well, not even he, sure if in Mbappe... Maybe without Harry Kane as well. Yeah, you know? well, uh, oh. to be honest, I mean, I think... I mean, if you listen to what's... You know, you've got Bellingham bleating, you've got Foden bleating, you've got, you know, they're, they're Walkers bleating. You know, they're all kind of telling stories now. Well, at the next World Cup, Walker won me there. Walker won me on the team. Um, Harry Kane won me on the team. Um who else is there? Um, in 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 Holland, the Netherlands, Van Dijk is coming to the end of his career. He may not be there either, you know. Right. It, yeah. You know, there's lots of marquee players we know of now who will be only at the fringes of their teams, you know. So yeah, it'll, it'll be a whole new scenario for an awful lot of people. You know, maybe it's time for an African team to step up to the plate and make some waves. Well, like, Cameroon, isn't it? Yeah. Like Cameroon, like Roger Miller. Do you remember him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a fantastic uh, time, all right. That was in the 80s, 82, was it? 84. Was it? Yeah, it was probably all the way through the 80s, wasn't it? Cameroon Lions. To the 1980s, and the Cameroon had a nice team at home, you know? Yes, they did. Yeah. yeah. 82, 86, Cameroon was still. Still going, weren't they? 82 and 86, I think, weren't they? Yeah. Roger Miller, I remember him. God, he was a... Oh, he was... Um, he was some player. Lovely player. They and didn't yeah. know his age, did they? Huh? They didn't know his what? age. He, he had an un, undefined name, uh, age. Because there's the, no birth certificates and different things in Cameroon. Apparently, he was in his 40s anyway. Early yeah. 40s. You know, which was... Which was uh, Sensational enough, you know, to be playing uh, soccer at that level. You know, you wouldn't get that many 40-year-olds playing soccer at that level, you know? No, no. 
Don't mention that to Ronaldo, though. Huh? Don't mention that to Ronaldo. He could be picking up his pension and still trying to play. Well, Ronaldo will be... Ronaldo will be 41. 40, 41. I don't think he'll be. I don't think... um, The managers of those international teams aren't that silly, you know? But, I mean... Maybe maybe he'll drive the bus to the ground every day. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I I think that, you know, he's... um... I, I don't know if is Martinez still the coach in Portugal. I th- I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He is. He is. I, mean, I I I don't see it. after his performance in the Euros. I don't see any way they they can bring him back. And it was just not just his performance, but the way the rest of the team kowtow to him and yeah. give him the ball and what have you. And not doing what they did best, trying to win the game themselves. I, I think he'd, he'd have been better employed as a sub for all the matches with yeah. Portugal, you know. And yeah. uh, he, he would have been more effective, in my opinion, you know. But there you go, Joe. Okay, guys. Okay, Darwin and Joe. Who is the best soccer player you've seen playing live, uh, Darwin? I give you a minute. I give you a minute to think about it. And Joe, who's the best soccer player? It doesn't matter whether they're a goalkeeper, a back, or a forward that you've seen. And you said to you say to yourself, "God, they can't. That can't be taught. That comes to him naturally. It's a gift. It's a you know, a coach." Well, um, I'd probably I'd probably say from memory as a young kid, George Best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, if you said in decades, if you said like from from the mid sixties to the mid seventies, I would have said George Best. If you said to me, I mean, I know what my dad would have said. He would have said Jimmy Greaves all day long. Yeah, and then sorry, yeah. from that era, shall we say? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Eric Cantona from the. 80s, mid 80s. Yeah, the, the, the two, the, the two that sprung to my mind. I saw both of them playing was uh, George Best and, of course, Stan Bowles. You know, I think Stan Bowles was just. Uh, I'd look anybody who never saw Stan Bowles playing, look up some of his clips on YouTube, and watch. But you, watch. You, but you could say the same about Tony Curry, couldn't you? Yeah, Tony Curry was another one. Yeah. Trying to enjoy it, yeah, that's right. You could say the same about Glenn Oddle because he never really played enough for England, did he? No. 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 He, again, he was he was the type of player who was frowned on by yeah. England managers at that time. I have one for you. I saw when I was at Leicester, we had, um, I think there was an England under 23 international match being played. And before the match, there was a, an exhibition. Uh, of veteran players and uh, Ferenc Puskas played oh. and, and Lev, Lev Yashin Lev Yashin uh, the yeah. goalkeeper and there was a there was a ton of other guys there as well but th- those two are the most famous I remember uh, and I remember you know uh, seeing Greavesy back in the day uh, Bobby Moore Back in the day, yeah. uh, uh, then I saw Rivellino uh, play in um, in the Maracana when we were there with the Ireland team, um, and he was absolutely, I mean, astounding <laughs> as, as a player. I saw Johan Cruyff and Johan Neskins play when yeah. they were guys when Ajax were starting in the to be the power in the 60s. I saw them play in the um, in the Amsterdam Olympic Arena. Yeah. Uh, FC 20 back in the day was they were playing in the semi-final of the, the Dutch Cup and won 5-0. So I've seen those guys play. Um, What's the word? Total football. Yeah. So I've seen Platini play when I was with the Irish team in, uh, in France. Um, so, 
I mean, but to me, I've seen George Best a few times. I uh, saw him play at Leicester. Um, and to me, he was probably the best player that I've seen um, in his... He, he was in his prime, but it, it was early kind of thing because he stopped playing, what, 27, 28, something like that? When he yeah. should really have been coming into his prime. Yeah. Uh, you know, but George Best was absolutely brilliant. And, um, I, you know, but so, there were so many players. I've, I mean, I've seen all like, the, the great Liverpool teams play. And what have you? And um, you know, you look at the how, likes. Sorry. How good? Uh, let's keep it parochial. How good was Steve Highway, Joe? Steve Highway was a terrific player. Yeah, terrific yeah. Player. He could go. Yeah. By, he could go by people like box to box. Yeah, and he. I mean, and he could do it. You know, consistently in a game. Yeah. He he would go at people. I I saw him play. In Daily Mount, when we played Russia, I was in the squad that day. The 4-0, four, four was that the 3-0? 3-0, yeah. when uh, Don Gibbons scored a hat-trick and yeah. Lynn Brady made his debut. In Daily and, Mount Park. And Steve, Steve was absolutely brilliant that day. Um, yeah. I think he laid on a couple of Don's goals for him. Um, but he, I mean, he was very good. You know, Kevin Keegan was a terrific player. I played against him and seen him play. Kenny Dalglish, the same. You do know, you remember, uh, do you remember Malcolm McDonald? Malcolm McDonald. Oh, I guess Malcolm McDonald at uh, Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in the first division back in seventy uh, four. Yeah. And, uh, he, was good, he was a good player. He was he was a very good player, but Terry McDermott was another very good player. Right. Um, that was at Newcastle. Bobby Moncour was there. You know, they're, they're just some... I, I'm trying to think back now on all the players that I've seen play and played played against them. Um, and, of course, afterwards you'd kick yourself because you'd remember guys. Um, uh, you know, I played against uh, John Robertson when he was a young guy at Forest. We played against each other in, in Holland. And we used to play against each other in the third team for yeah. at Leicester, and he was at at um, Forest. So, and he was a midfield player then. John Robertson was a good player, but he had a he had a really bad injury. He broke his leg when he was young in his uh, late teens, and then um, came back from it. And then they ended up putting him uh, on out on the wing uh, at uh, Forest, and he was he was absolutely brilliant. So. I played against the likes of Colin Bell and Rodney Marsh. Oh, you know, like that. I saw Rodney Marsh was Rodney Marsh was a character. I thought he was a character. Oh yeah, he he really was, you know. And um, I got put in my place by um, by Colin Bell one day. We were playing at um, Man City, and I, I was sub, and we're losing. And I went on, and the uh, game was going on, and I get the ball and. Colin comes to, to face me up and I nutmeg him and get the ball on the other side. And I <laughs> I shout Megs, you know, as I do it. And I'm going, and he looked at me and he said, Joe, look at the scoreboard. We're losing 3-0. <laughs> he didn't care about being <laughs> made by me. <laughs> okay, I went away with my tail between my legs on that one. But who, 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 who's, who, who, who are the top players in the Premiership today? Top players in the Premiership today. Wow. De Bruyne. De Bruyne, yeah. Um, Silva, Silva, uh, Silva the mid, another Man City player. Rodri. Oh, yeah. Rodri. Yeah. Rodri. Yeah. Rodri is uh, another great one. Uh, I think, you man, yeah. I think he's, he's much maligned in, in England, but I think he's a terrific player, and I think that's Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, you know what? You can talk about people and say, well, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. And I, I remember our coach at Leicester, Dave Coates, coming to us one day and he, he says, uh, he was talking to the manager. We were talking about players, you know, and uh, 
uh, what have you. And uh, when it, he said, well, when when the boss sends somebody out to um, to scout players, and they come back and they say, well, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. And Jimmy Bloomfield turned to, used to turn to him and say, tell me what he can do and how good is he at it and we'll work on the other stuff if we have to. Precisely. And, and, I think... and that's the thing. And that's kind of Bruno Fernandes. People, we say he doesn't defend, he doesn't do this, he has tantrums, right? He does, he has all those things. He's, he's a, fant he's a fan fantastic passer of the ball. Oh, he's a fine footballer. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I mean, he can shoot, he can pass, you know, he scores. He, no, he, he, he has. I mean, Bruno Fernandes at Manchester United has too many dunces on the team with him, in my opinion. Full clowns. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with you on that one. Pure but clowns, you know. Yeah, and, he's uh, probably, uh, he's a, oh, he's a level of, great player. He's a level above him, isn't he? Yeah. He is, yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, I, I he hope... You know, it's so difficult when you, you ask that question about, you know, you think about Rude Hullet. We probably saw Hullet play for Chelsea at the back end of his time. Right. Yeah. But he was still classy, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I was lucky enough to see Cruyff at Wembley with England v Holland and stuff like that. And, you, yeah. you know, where do you put Beckenbauer? I mean, well... Fans hey, Beckenbauer would make a World Eleven team. What about Gerd Muller? Gerd, Gerd Muller. Gerd Gerd Muller, Muller would be, uh, Frank Beckenbauer would be another one. You're yeah. looking. At. Gerd uh, Muller scored more goals than than you can imagine, didn't he? Yeah, Gerd and then you, you at that time you look at Gunter Netzer that yeah. played for Germany and um, and uh, what about Flint? Klinsman. No. So yeah, so I mean, over you're, time, you're, you're, you're a good Klinsman, yeah, flamboyant. Another one of them. Um, you know, you, you could look at um, so many players that were uh, just absolutely brilliant. And you of know, course, Alan Hudson was one. You know, and we talk about him, but we for, we for, we forget. Liam Brady was a world class player. Oh, oh he yeah. was. Liam Brady, yeah. Oh, Brady was. Brady was. Yeah, and John, John Giles. Giles was as well. I agree with you there. Yeah. No doubt. So yeah. you look. I mean, you look at those guys and you go, "Wow!" You know, to to play with and against those guys. Is... Frank Frank Stapleton was was good too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, Frank, did, yeah. Frank was an outstanding centre forward. He really was. He was no doubt about it. Charlie George. Charlie uh, George. Yeah. Another another um absolutely mercurial player. Um I'm trying to I'm trying to think of um Well where, where where would you put the, the crazy gang, Vinnie Jones and all that team? <laughs> <laughs> I'd put them in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you think about it. I mean, it, it's really it's, when you think about the the question about who's the best player you've ever seen live, you, it, it's impossible to answer. We've yes, it is. Probably thrown yes. up thirty or forty names there. Right. So, so you know, Gordon Banks. We don't we don't even mention yeah. it. You know, Absolutely. how do you how do you compare? You know, Gordon Banks and Lev Yashin with Peter Shilton. Or uh, Pat Jennings, Pat Jennings, Pat Jennings yeah. uh, or Bob, 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 who? Bob Wilson, Bob Wilson. Yeah, Bob yeah. Was, what about uh, Jimmy Rimmer? Jimmy Rimmer was a great goalkeeper, terrific goalkeeper, very unfortunate. He, Harry Gray, yeah, he he uh, got he got injured in the European Cup final. He did and had off, and then the keeper that went down had a blinder. Um, but you know, you look at those. And it's like we've talked about before, right? So how do you, is he the great, it's like I said before, Pele said when he was asked that question, the best player in the world, that's a very tricky question. Is he the best fullback? Is he the best goalkeeper? Because if he's the best player in the world, he has to be able to play 
the best in every position. Otherwise, you're now comparing, you know, George Best to uh, Carlos Alberto playing right back, yeah. right for Brazil. Yeah, absolutely brilliant fullback. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you compare? How do you compare S- S- Zico? Right, with another with pick- absolutely, and Socrates and uh, yeah. Falcao, all those yeah. guys. You know, Gerson, Revelino, in, uh, in the nineteen seventy mm-hmm. World Cup winning team. You know, Jerzino. Yeah. You, you could come up with the names. Uh, you look at... Uh, there was a guy as well, uh, Tosteo. Tosteo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was another one in that uh, 70 World yeah. Cup team. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, the, so is it centre-halves, is it left-backs? Who was the best left-back that ever played? You know? Dennis Irwin. Dennis was a fine player. Dennis yeah. was a fine <laughs> but so, yeah, was, I mean, so was Terry Cooper. Yeah. yeah, when you when you think about the names we're throwing out here, uh, I mean, what about Michael Owen? Yeah, Michael Owen was certainly... Robbie Fowler, Robbie Fowler scored goals. Yes, they That's did. True. That's true. Um, he, he, Alan like, Shearer. He, Alan Shearer. Yeah. And we, you know, you sit. We, I mean, we're talking, and you, you're sitting there going. Like you, you, you went into saying about Doug Leach, you know how good was Keegan without Toshak? Right. You know how many goals did Toshak set up for Keegan? Must be. Well, he uh, did, but then dozens. when when Keegan went to Hamburg, he won the Ballon yeah. d'Or, I think, twice. He did. Yeah. While he was there, you know, so you you look at that and go, you know, yeah, that was that was pretty impressive. Um, for him to do that. But, you know, you look at Scotland and you look at Jimmy Johnston, you look at uh, Jim Baxter, yeah. all of those guys, you know, that, that played at that time that were absolutely... You mean, was you mean on the team, uh, Murdoch, and Murdoch? Yeah, Bobby Murdoch, yeah. Murdoch, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to put Joe Jordan in that group. No, no, no. You know, and we forget Bobby Lennox, uh, the great Di Stefano, the, uh, Di Stefano. Yeah. Said, Bobby Bobby Lennox is the best player I've ever seen. He mesmerizes me when I watch him. The things that he does. Yeah, and that's coming from people again, another Di Stefano. What a brilliant player he was. Yeah. You know? And Bobby Lennox was a little wizard. Yeah. Wizard. Yeah, wizard. So, yeah, yeah. I mean I mean what about Dixie Dean? I mean how many goals has he got to his name? And, and there you go. So you go you go back to those <laughs> Tom, Tom Finney and yeah. uh, Stan. You know? Stanley, uh, where'd you put Stanley Matthews in that? Yeah, that's what about a, Billy what about Billy Wright? Yeah. Well, you know, Billy Wright kind of I think Billy Wright when the Hungarians exposed England for for um, what they really were at that time. Yeah. Um, that kind of tainted Billy Wright's... Um, my, d- my dad was at that match, Jack. Well, he was, yeah. Yeah. It really. It was at Wembley, wasn't it? Yeah. I think yeah. it was well, the first time they'd ever lost at Wembley, wasn't it? Yeah, they'd never been beaten on home soil, I don't yeah. think. Well, uh, that, was a, that was a terrific Hungarian side, though. They were terrific. Well, it was brilliant. Terrific, Hungarian side. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was. And they're building. They're building a nice team again. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we haven't. I mean, we haven't even said you save you. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. No, no. Um, I mean, we haven't said. No, no, I mean, how, can you, how can you not say you save you? Isn't it? I mean, it's no, like. No, I, I do you remember? Can... Did you see no, Noel Cantwell? Is he a bit old now? Noel Cantwell playing. Yeah. No, sure. No. Yeah. But then we haven't even talked about the Italians. What about Maldini? That's right, yeah. You know, yeah. Beretti. <laughs> Dino Zoff. There's another Dino one. Dino Zoff, yeah. You yeah. know, Claudio Gentile would kick his own yeah. grandmother. A but, Pirlo. Pirlo. Yeah, Pir- yeah. A Pirlo. And oh. then we haven't even talked about... Um, Roberto Baggio. Yeah, Baggio. And uh, we haven't talked Gilachi. about... From Mazzola. Or... Um, uh, Gianni Rivera. Uh, we haven't talked about Pavel Nedved. Uh, no. no. 
We haven't we haven't talked about Kazdena, that team, that Polish team. That yeah. Beat, yeah. Uh, Jersey Gorgon was a fantastic centre half for them. You know, they had Lato and Gadoka on the wings for them. So I mean, just terrific, terrific players. And uh, and then you you haven't even talked about some of the Dutch guys. We talked Van Basten. Um, yeah. Van Nistelrooy. Van Nistelrooy. Another one, you know. Yeah. So I mean, they, the the talent that's played this game is absolutely unbelievable, you know. And, and to try to, you know, I mean, even even wingers have different styles of taking people on, you know, and different ways of doing things. So it, it's just that. Uh, and then and then you have midfield players, you know, you have someone like Graham Sumas. What you about Julian George? George? Did you see him playing a lot? Landon Donovan. Uh I saw him play uh yeah. quite a bit, but yeah. I, I wouldn't say I mean he was a fine player, don't get me wrong, but he was he, uh, he we have you know, we haven't even said Brian Robson. No, no, not that see, yeah. and that's what I'm saying, because you come up there's so many players out there. That we haven't even thought about, you know. Like we've already talked about Pele, but we didn't. We haven't talked about Garincha. No. We, uh, we haven't talked about um, got some of the other. Uh, uh, oh, did we say Carlos Alberto? Did we say him? Can't remember. We, we, thought, we did say Carlos Alberto earlier. Yeah. yeah. You see yeah. him. You never forget him. Yeah. So it. Um, you know, just so many absolutely brilliant, brilliant players that have played the game. And I bet you were when we when we stop doing this, names will start popping into our heads of people <laughs> saying, and you go and that list will be even probably bigger than what we just talked about right now. Of course. So, of course. You know, so it's uh, I mean and I love talking about players and how good they were and how good they are. Because, I mean, we haven't even talked about Mo Salah here. And how has he been for Liverpool? Yeah. You know, we didn't, we, I don't know, did we talk about Alan Hudson when he no. was at the peak? Another fantastic player right there. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea and later Arsenal, Stoke City, he had a resurgence there. Um, you know, Peter Osgood. At Chelsea, oh, Peter you know, Osgood was such and that, a... another one. You know that was absolutely um, brilliant. You know, a well, and we haven't even said Bobby Charlton. No, and, no. and that's what I'm saying. And okay, so then you go Duncan Edwards, right? Because we forget yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then um, one of Dennis the Dennis Violet, Dennis Violet, Dennis Violet, and one of the the um, oh, what's his name? Uh, he was in the Busby Babes. Liam Whelan. Tommy Taylor. Liam Whelan from Dublin. Liam Whelan was, uh, was one. He was, he unfortunately died in the uh, Munich air. Crash. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. players that were, you know, absolutely brilliant players, you know, and um, and sometimes they just came at the wrong time. You know, they there was somebody else that was around that was liked by the manager more than them. And that, I mean, how many times has that happened? Yeah, it's happened an awful lot of times, you know. There's, yeah. there's, but... It has. And it, I mean, and, and how... that, it. It's a game of opinions, right? It is. Yeah. It is. How good was Roy McFarlane for Derby? Oh, he was brilliant. Right, and he didn't, was he didn't play outside. that much for England, did he? And your man didn't he? Did, he played a few, but he was injured a lot. Didn't your man play for Derby as well, Bruce Rioch? Bruce Rioch played for Derby. You're a great player. For Everton, played yeah. for um, Derby, good... Everton, Luton, yeah. Aston Villa. He started at yeah. Aston Villa. He and he his was... brother, he and his brother went from. Um, Aston Villa to I think Luton for uh, 
for a hundred and odd grand or something like that when they were young players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bruce did um, did better, but Del yeah. Uh, yeah. Delhi Dugan, Delhi Dugan. The Dug, you talk about the Dug. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's uh, you know, you haven't even talked about some of the great Liverpool players that have played. You know, back in the back in the day, that were absolutely outstanding players as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, it. Uh, I mean, the list, the list, and we, we there's some countries. Like Valderrama, we haven't even talked about him. Yeah, from uh, Colombia. Colombia, and there's a few Chileans, and there's a few yeah. Mexican, a few Mexicans. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, 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 it, uh, yeah, it's. There was a goalkeeper from Mexico in the 1968. 68 was it? I think. I remember he's a huge. He had a huge pair of gloves. That's all I remember about it. But he was a fantastic goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. Throw, 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 throw it out there as Lopez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good chance. <laughs> Next Smith. Harry Smith. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for this, <laughs> we're reminiscing, folks. And if you have any suggestions for... Um, the best player you've seen playing the game, it doesn't matter from what era, let us know and we'll, we'll let you know that you let us know. So that has been a blast again for another edition of Sports You. So from Derwin, Joe and myself, till we meet again, hopefully I'll be back at my own place next Monday night. Take care, lads, and good sport for the weekend. We look forward to the Olympics Friday night, opening ceremony, and the soccer is starting on Wednesday to be on all the channels as far as I know. France, are kicking off the tournament. It's in France, just the soccer tournament. And they'll be playing, um, I know they're playing the USA or New Zealand, I don't know which, but anyway, wins the, you can look it up anyway. Take care, lads, have a good week. Take care, See boys. You, Pat. Right. Take care. See you, Doug.